brains. Uh, here's our program for today. We're going to collect written homework two in just a few minutes. Then we're going to then we're going to follow that with some eye clicker questions uh, about the class work that we did Friday. There's a little follow up to that, so keep that out. Don't put it away. Uh, and then we're going to do some problem solving and some pendulum timing. And there will be a study homework assignment today. So, uh, boy, that looks pretty impressive. That's an artist's concept of a black hole with a, a spinning black hole, Sean. Uh, and a jet of uh, superheated gas from the stuff that's trying to enter the black hole. And it's so hot that it's glowing. And then near the the rotation axis of the black hole, the physics sometimes produces a jet. And uh, we actually see those out in the universe from time to time. Well, we think that's what we see. Okay, just to reinforce the SARC tutoring uh, today, 2.30, with Juan Cruz Pellegrini tomorrow, with Emeris, Lopez, etc. So make sure you jot those down. Uh, it's also inside web courses if you haven't already jotted it down. Uh, has anybody gone to that um, like last Friday or last Thursday? Yeah, you went Thursday. Anybody? So you know what that means? I should make class a lot more difficult. Push you guys into those tutors. Good, I'll do that. I've been too easy on you. All right. Well, yeah, fine. That's an interesting theory. Their schedules don't work, but zero zip zap. That's not. That's not a thing. Only one student. Okay, last names A B C D E F. Bring them up to me, please. You're the group for today. I hope it's a good one. Bring them around over here. Just stack them right here. Oh my goodness. This was easier though. Yeah, this was easier. Oh, ooh. The big graph. I know. I did the best I could, but it was really messy. I know it's a little shaky. So yeah. well, I'll, I'll be merciful. Yeah. Oh, what? What? That, what the hell is this? I told you guys on the handout. This is not. That's getting marked down today. Last week they had. Mer I had mercy, but not today. Okay, thank you. Nice. Yeah. Did you? So you turned it in last week? No. You didn't? You want to turn it in today? So it's Costa. Yeah, so that's where we go. That's that's where you, you're up at the top of the list alphabetically. So it goes by, yeah, so I go by C. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Anybody else? A, B, C, D, E, or F? Yo, did you turn in your homework? A, B, C, D, E, or E? Okay. Now, students, can you swap me over to the, the doc cam, please? Uh, I see some nice Mark Cucciaresi, nice Parabola, uh, Aaron Espinal. Not, looks like a semicircle, but that's all right. Up, shh, 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 come on, this is serious. Um, a couple people don't have a parabola. That is uh, not a good situation because I'm. It even says on the grading block down below there, diagram. And task number uh, E is include a diagram label carefully. So if you don't have one, you're going to get marked down. Even if it's even if it's not. Oh my goodness. Cole Kaufman. Where are you at? I'll have mercy on you for this sketch. He's trying. I mean, it's some of these. Oh, my goodness. Derek Aguirre. Aguirre. Woo! But see, the thing is, the, the reason it's a, it's a good enough diagram, and it's labeled nicely, so that's the main thing. But the thing is, you know, if you're – 
like Derek here. You know, this is kind of shaky looking down. Look at this down here. That's a little shaky looking. But, you know, the thing is, it's enough. It's close enough for government work. It's labeled uh, well. And even though he's not a second Leonardo da Vinci, uh, we'll let the numbers do the talking. Okay, Derek, where are you at, Derek? All right, Derek. So that's good. All right, so. So even though I'm giving you guys the business, now here's a couple that are a little small. And here's another one without. But there's one unforgivable error here that I'm, here's another one without. Some stuff on the back. No, nope, I don't look at it at the back. You're supposed to do your work all on the front. Tanner. All right, now this one, I'm waving it around so you can't see the name, but this one is bad. It's on notebook paper. No, you may not do that. It's got to be on this handout and on the front side only. All right. Now, I've said that in class a couple times, and this time nobody, nobody gets a free pass. Now that, one, that one's going to be graded out. Anyways, oh, my goodness. This one's a lot. Uh, yeah, here's a kind of a teeny little diagram. Thing. Why do you keep talking over the top of me? It's rude and it's distracting your classmates. And I already shushed everybody once. It doesn't apply to you, maybe? Is that what you're thinking? Come on, have some class. Yeah, so these are, these are, uh, now I'll be grading these for your numbers as well as your, This, this, you know, I, I screwed up that castaway problem, so I, I shouldn't talk, but some of these diagrams are a little bit, uh, I'll have to be a little bit merciful. But on the numbers, no, you should have all the numbers correct. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, keep this. All right, so I'll put these in here in my homework folder. Now, we got a lot of work to do today. Uh, one of the things I want to do now with you is uh, let me switch back to the, to the uh, laptop. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about the solutions. Let me just check something here. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the solutions, but before we uh, before we do that, um, I want to do some. Uh, we're going to do our first official clicking of the semester, so get your clicker uh, open, and we're going to do uh, a numeric answer. All right, so hit the refresh key, and just type it. What is your reaction time? So go by, back to your classwork or your notes from last time. And I just want a record, so everybody's going to be graded correctly if you answer. All right, now don't put a minus sign in there. And lead with a zero. Zero point something something. All right. And just get those. And don't forget to hit the send key. Yeah, Steve. No, to the to the oh my goodness! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Do you need more than hundredths of a second? Who needs it? Who's going to just have one significant figure to the hundredth of a second? Nobody. So if you have if you have milliseconds, just give round it off to the nearest hundredth of a second. Okay, let's let's stay with this, and that'll be close enough for government work. Let me see what you guys have got. Yeah, this is – actually, this is kind of interesting. This is very interesting. Okay, hurry up.
Can you guys count the students? Can you do a count, please? Kendra, you Kendra, you're using your phone to count? Very nice. Good. Smart. I do this when my wife is giving me the business. I go like this. Seriously? It's like saying, oh, seriously? Or sometimes I go like this. Seriously? <laughs> oh, this should be more than eight. Come on, hurry up. Get your time in there. Ten seconds to vote. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. What do you got? Yeah, eighty-seven. Okay. A few of you didn't vote. Um, let's look at these answers. It's actually kind of interesting. This is nice. Oh, I wish my other lecture hall. Had, mon had screens like this. So we got, look at this, we got a lot of point at, at around point two, point two something, point two four. Oh my goodness. These two guys, I'm glad I didn't give, I didn't get them in there for the free five dollars. Uh oh. 1.87. Is that in milliseconds or something? Point zero six. Somebody's like that's like the flash. Is that you? I saw your hand go up. Is that you with point zero six? Who's got? Who's got point zero six? Whose was that? I just, it's. I just want to know who's like in the justice. Is Flash in the Justice League or the Avengers? Justice League. Okay. So who in here is from the Justice League? I just want to curious. See, it's a top secret identity, so that nobody's nobody's fessing up. That's all right. Uh, point one nine seven. Point two two eight. <laughs> Uh, are you laughing at this point two eight nine 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 nine? The reason that 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 happens is because a student will uh, their uh, the computer computer science people in here. Why does it do that? It's a computer. Uh, uh, it's a feature of a computer number handling thing. Come on, what computer science guys? You know why that happens? You don't. The computer science people in here, and I know you're. Anyways, that's a, that's from uh, the fact that the uh, processor doesn't handle certain decimal fractions nicely uh, when it's doing binary arithmetic or hex, hexadecimal <laughs> arithmetic, something like that. Yeah, these are all milliseconds. You guys, you're gonna have to. Oh. Now, if I'm giving a test and I ask you for a reaction time, you better get it right. These ones will be marked wrong. Because that's like saying you have a two-second 
reaction time. You know, 1.95. That's almost, and then there's there's one person with two seconds. You know what that means? Free fall for two seconds. Just figure that out. One half times 9.8. So it's 4.9 times two uh, squared. Okay, so 4.9 times four. So that's about 20 meters of drop. Now you may, unless there's now, who's that guy with the elastic arms? He's in the uh, Fantastic Four, right? Unless you're that guy, you know, it can't, you know, that's a that's a misnomer up there. All right. Now, we're going to uh, we're going to tab. I'll tabulate all this stuff so everybody will get this right. Uh, this particular question. So. All right. Now. I have another question that I'm going to I'm going to actually grade. And this one is going to be short. Uh, it's going to be alphanumeric. So uh, hit your refresh key. OK. And answer this one. Oh, no, this one is uh, I take that back. This one is the next one is. Uh, alphanumeric. Um, this one is, uh, so hit the refresh key again. This is multiple choice. So just take a look at this image and try to analyze it visually. What does it tell you? This is going to be interesting. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's all over the place. Fifteen seconds to vote, starting right now. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Um, if you're not, you, there's 86, 87 people in here. We just counted. And three of you, four of you are not answering. If that's because you don't give a damn, that's fine. But if you don't have a clicker, that's not fine. Get yourself a clicker. Uh, and start answering questions. Uh, and I know some of you are still waiting for your financial aid, so just if you want to talk to me about it, you sure can. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the spread of answers here. Take a look at this. Look at that. We got we got a whole range now. Now what this tells me is um, th there is a correct answer here, but the class has not reached it yet. All right, so let's think about this image. All right. And this one I'm going to um, grade correctly. So let me move this down a little bit. Actually. Okay. Now, if you look at that, the detonations or the, the, the sub, you know, the sparkly parts of the firework, they're going out from a center, okay? The center is behind them. You can see that some of the arcs are kind of pointing back into the center and, and, and back below, all right? From that angle, they're pointing at something that's slightly below. Also, the tilt, if you think of it as a, a flower, it's a flower that's not like this. It's not straight up and down. It's got a little bit of tilt, okay? And the sunny, the, the side of the flower that's facing the sun is, is up here, all right? You see that? See that in the picture? Okay, the blossom is opening to the upper, uh, kind of the upper right, all right? So that means it was closed back here, all right? So that means it detonated somewhere. No, so here's the flower, and it detonated somewhere back here, all right? 
not too far back, but you know, somewhere back there. So what that means is, and so the, fl the flower is here facing this way and the detonation point is back here. So that means it's on the up, it's, it's still going up, okay? Slightly before the uh, apogee. So on this one, let me get the cursor here back over here. On this one, the correct answer is A. Now, the biggest group of you did answer that, but not a majority. So make a note of this. And, you know, you guys, I'm going to ask you questions like this. That's not, you know, that's not something that you can look up in a, in a book of formulas. That means you've got to th be able to think geometrically. And that brings me uh, to my comments uh, about... Uh, the solution to homework two. So I'm going to talk into the. Can you swatch me over to do, switch me to document cam? We're going to go to the document cam, and I'm going to keep recording. And I'll insert this into the document cam. So I'm just going to give you some comments about. Uh, homework two. Now I've already given you some preliminary comments about the, the, the nature of your diagram. Uh, so here's farmer's fields. Now here's some of the stuff we did last week. And actually we'll come back to this. Let me push forward here. Um, here's our complete the square notes from last time. And I put those in the, you know, it's nice now that I use Instagram because the, uh, these, uh, document cam notes are in Instagram usually as well as inside the YouTube video. Okay. Now I'm going to get my. All right, now I'm going to work on this. Uh, so this is 121, 20. Um, homework two comments. Okay, so this is page one. I, th I don't think we'll go very for much further than one page, but uh, first thing I'm going to do is write out the arc. Make a picture of the arc. Let me put on my specs. Do a good job with this. And uh, I'm going to make an, a really big picture because I have something special I want to show you. All right, so here's the x axis all the way out this way. And here's the Y axis up here. And for com computational simplicity, we're going to take this to be the, the, uh, the throw point. Is this, is that what this was? Somebody's throwing the ball. Okay. So if you throw, if you're throwing the heater, this is where you uh, throw from. Okay. Point T. Now I'm going to draw I'm going to draw a block that's five. I'm going to draw a dotted line square that's five by five uh, with its left corner at the point of uh, throw. Okay. Now somewhere out over here is going to be the uh, point of catching, the point of impact. And up here somewhere in the middle, is going to be the uh, apogee. Now I'm going to write another five by five block to the right of that. Okay, so that's five blocks across, and here's five blocks down. 
And then I'm going to write another one. Five. And the reason that I'm doing this, I'm writing a fourth one, five blocks across, five blocks down. So they're all perfect squares. The reason that I'm doing this is that my initial velocity vector, uh, V0, uh, is at a 45 degree angle. Now that's a given. Okay, 45 degrees with horizontal. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to draw a dotted line diagonal across this first square. Okay. Now, if there were no gravity, that is the trajectory that it would take. At the outset of the arc, it's going to be tangent to that. So this will help us sketch. All right. And I'm going to get out my pencil and then darken it in with ink. Uh, let me use this one. Okay. Now, I happen to know, and you guys may be able to prove it if you think carefully, that if I draw a box of this kind and then three copies of it, the apogee will be at the top of the set, top right of the second box. Now, you can prove that. All right. You're not going to prove it today. But you can maybe gnaw on it tonight. And this works for any uh, launch angle. So if you launch at 22 degrees, you know, kind of down like this, um, you would draw um, shorter rectangles for which the diagonal is 22 degrees instead of 45. All right. And then you'd write out four of them. And then the catch point is down here. At the lower right corner of the fourth, uh, of the fourth square. So this is x max, comma zero. This is apogee. All right. So that's um, one half x max, comma y max. Okay, and in uh, in uh, parabolic parlance, uh, what did they? Can you can you give me my my stack? Do you have the other homework? Did people turn in the homework to you? Oh, everybody, bring the rest of you guys. Not that they didn't turn it in to me. Bring it up to the front. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Just stack it up here on top. I'm doing your homework for you. Yeah, just stack it right there. Okay, this is for you. Let me look at this. Okay. That one looks good. Wait a minute, hold up. Oh, hold up. Nicholas King. See that? Hey, you guys, look at this one. Look at Nick. Nicholas King. Do you, where are you? Come on over here. Do you mind if I show your students, everybody here? Look at this. This parabola, that's just about the right proportions. That's about four times wider than it is tall, so that's that's not bad. Okay, the rest of you guys stack them up. Good, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Cameron Giggler. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, bad boy.
That's copying from the book. That's it. Everybody's homework in. All right. Now, Robert Pomichter, where are you at? Robert, do you mind if I show people your sketch? Okay. Students. Now, we're getting back to, to my sketching in a minute. But I, you know, I showed you um, – whose was that? Nick. Nick King's. And then here's Robert Pomichter's. Now, this one's a lot taller. This is – and this is the way you always think of parabolas. You know, you think of them, you know, as tall like this. And this would be, if this were a baseball, uh, that, you know, this would be like a to it would be a big moonshot is what they would call that. You know, if it clear, if it was a home run, that would classify as a moonshot homework, you know, really way up there in the stratosphere, a lot of elevation and a lot of distance. But if it's if it doesn't clear the the outfield, then it might just be a pop fly. You know, it's it's tall, all right. But in any case, it, that is not uh, that would, you know, if, if this were the case, you'd have to have different rectangles because the top of your second rectangle would have to be right here. So this this technique I've shown you um, with the four rectangles. So if it's a 45-degree launch angle, it's four squares. But if it's not, then you have four rectangles. And, the you know, the launch angle has to be the diagonal of one of them. Okay, so the one that Robert had would have, you know, like about 70 degrees here instead of 45. But you just make a bunch of 70-degree diagonal rectangles and then just make a stack of four of them. All right, now back to my sketch. Okay, now this one, this is the, I like this diagram because this shows where the object would go if there were no gravity. And in fact, I'm going to draw one more uh, bonus. Uh, can you give me that, that, there's a marker over here, that purple marker. I'm going to do this one in purple. Okay, so this is the purple bonus square. Now, if you stack another one here, like this, whose right edge touches apogee, you can find a nice little – now, this is nice because it's squares, but you can do this with other rectangles. Um, this is where the baseball would continue to go if there were no gravity. But what gravity does is it, it starts here parallel to this, this diagonal here at 45, and then it gracefully curves so that the parabola is flat here, okay? So let me see if I can gracefully sketch it in. Okay, there I'm close. I'm just kind of ease it around. All right, that's pretty flat. Now, this is where the object would go if – so this is like no gravity apogee, okay, no gravity after this amount of time. Uh, but we have gravity, so this is actually where it goes. Now, the it's a symmetric curve if you neglect air resistance, and it comes back down here. Now, it's going to land – parallel to this 45, okay? So let me try to sketch this in. All right. And, you know, this is not that good, but you can see that uh, Nicholas King had about this, the right proportions. And if you do it on a computer, you know, using Excel spreadsheet or something like that, uh, you can get a nice diagram if you make your – uh, size is correct, your, your width and your height and width correct. All right, now let's take a look at this. The initial, the, the key is to unlock the components of the initial velocity. So let me draw those in here. Okay, so this is Vx, 
of zero do this in ink vx of zero here and this is vy of zero okay the initial y component of the velocity and this is the initial x component of the velocity all right now all this stuff remember is a is a competition between the upward component of the velocity and gravity you know it's a case of the lord giveth and the lord it, actually the lord taketh away on the way up it taketh away gravity taketh away all the upward uh, velocity but then giveth it all back on the way back down but this one it doesn't touch all right this is the constant okay so i'll just make a note of that and this one up here, well, the y component, this one is a constant of the motion uh, that's the initial condition, uh, but vy itself as a function of time is going to go down to zero. So in this particular case, let's see. Uh, I think I actually calculated this somewhere. Where did I calculate that? Oh, I did it on my computer. Um, so let's do it here. Vx of zero is equal to the cosine of pi over four, 45 degrees, times V of zero itself. Okay. So this is square root two over two times 37 meters per second. And uh, what does that come out to? It's like 26 point something. 26 point, point 0.2 meters per second. And so Vy of zero is going to be the same. Now, if you don't have 45 degrees, you got to do the sign of whatever your uh, launch angle is. Uh, but I'll write, write it down here. Pi over 4 times V of zero. And so that's also equal to 26.2 meters per second. Okay, now this is the stuff that changes. So down here, what that means is that um, Vy uh, at point C, I'll call it capital C, is equal to negative 26.2 meters per second. Okay, you know, it's... it's uh, it's the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It's taking away up here on the way up. So up here, Vy is zero. So let's write that down. Vy at apogee is zero. Now, you still have this. Vx is, you know, 26.2 all the way across. All right? But... This change here, okay, is an easy way to figure out uh, the uh, the hang time. All right, now here's what I what I mean by that. Delta v uh, at the apogee. Delta v is uh, uh, final, which is zero zero point zero meters per second minus 26.2 meters per second okay that's the initial all right and it's also equal to g times delta t all right so delta t in general is uh, delta v over g and in this case negative 26.2 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared and so that is about the cinchiest way to figure out the time at apogee so if this is zero down here at the origin then this so this is about uh, two point two point what two point seven two point six who's got it two point six seven Come on, get your calculators out. We're not just whistling Dixie here. What is this, chopped liver day? 
Come on, get your calculators out. You're scientists now. You're studying with me. You're a scientist whether you want to be or not. Okay? Can you verify me on that? 26.2 divided by 9.8. And notice it's positive. 2.67? 2.67. Okay, so don't don't just look. Work with me. Make notes with me. All right. This is what I call the rise time. Now, you might have your own terminology for it, but that's what I call it. It's the amount of time it takes to, to rise up to the apogee from the launch point. All right? It's the amount of time it takes to lose all of your upward speed. All right? Uh, so the rise time, you lose all upward speed. Okay, and then on the so on the on the way back down, it's symmetric. You get it all back, all right? So um, the time here at the catch point is two times t subscript a, all right? See, so now we're getting the time measurements, and we already have the velocities and stuff, so we're golden. You know, we can figure out, you know, all the dimensions of this and then plug them into the hyperbola or the parabola formula. So T subscript C is two times that other one. So what is that, 5.34? Okay, 5.34. Uh, Sean, is that what we verified yesterday, 5.34? Okay, so there's your – so this is the hang time. So if you're if you're throwing a baseball, this is a spectacular hang time for a punter in the National Football League. This is like enormous hang. Well, the distance here, you know, you know this wouldn't be a punt. This is like this is going to work out to about 400 feet here. So punters, that's way longer than a, a, a football field. But but a hang, you know, a, a punter. A punter in the NFL wants to get about four seconds of hang time, okay? Now, so this is – but this is a normal time for a baseball. This would be a real moonshot for even this one would be a titanic home run. All right. So here's my total travel time, all right? Now, what that means is that it takes me 5.34 to get from point T to point C. Now, I can use the sideways component of the motion to figure the distance out because um, it's not changing, all right? So x max is equal to the hang time times vx of 0, all right? And so what that's like is that's the distance, you know, if the sun was out, this is like the distance that the shadow on the field moves. Think of it that way, all right? So this is what? Uh, so it's 5.34 times uh, 26.2. So what is that, 130 or something? 139 point what? Nine. Okay, so this is 139.9 meters, and that is an awesome home run, all right? So there's your maximum range. That's where your uh, robot twin has to stand in order to catch your heater if you launch it at exactly 45. Now, we also want to know the, you know, this is uh, in the, in the in the uh, handout, I think this was uh, we were using this form. Uh, what was this? It y minus h or y minus k? Okay, so I had y minus h equals alpha times x minus k quantity squared. 
so now we got to figure out this h that's the height okay so i'll label this okay now here's a, an easy way to think about this you know you don't you know you can write out you know the the equation for y if you want you know you can go like this uh y of zero plus vy of zero times t plus one half gt squared and plug in uh the rise time and you get it but um here now this is zero okay and this right here that's the purple height okay so this right here is the height that it would go okay so that's the height up here at the top of this no gravity rectangle up here right and it turns out that this this equation basically boils down to half of that now I just dropped that thing. Uh, so what you got it? So the way that I always think about this, and I think it's good to think of it in, in physical terms, is if you were up here at Apogee, you know, if you had a drone up here, or you know, like in the NFL, that camera that they they move all over the field. Okay, if you were up here at Apogee and you dropped a baseball straight down from Apogee at the moment this baseball passes you, so the moment uh, 2.67 seconds into its path, you drop another baseball, they're both going to hit at the same time. All right? So the straight down path, that distance is the same, the time is the same uh, as for this curved path all the way down, all right? And that's because there's no such thing as horizontal gravity. So what that means is that the drop distance is a simple <coughs> one-half gt squared. And in this case, uh, G, you would use uh, positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And T would be your rise time. Because so, your rise time is the same as your drop time. So um, drop time, this is the drop distance. And the drop time, um, is equal to the rise time, T subscript A, okay, because it's symmetric. I'm going to go to the next page. Right yeah. Sure. Sorry. All right. So, so as I was saying, this is the purple, this is the height of the purple rectangle. And look, if, if G was zero, if you were on a planet without, or if you were on a spaceship without any gravity, this is where it would go. You know, just speed times time and no acceleration and that would be the top of this rectangle up here all right where i have the letter ng and so but where it goes is the real apogee point a and the distance here is the drop distance that a baseball takes if you drop it and it's the same amount of time to drop it as the baseball takes going from apogee down to the catch point at x max so if you want to get the coordinate of point a the y coordinate all you got to do is figure out the drop distance all right and use the drop time equal to the rise time and you're golden all right so let's go to the next page and we'll just do that okay so um homework two comments Part two. Okay, so uh, the drop distance. Now this is a formula where you're kind of screwing around 
you're not using the negative sign uh, in the value of G. You're using a positive 9.8 because you know where it's going. It's just going, you know, it's just going downwards. Uh, so the drop distance uh, is equal to uh, 0 0.5 times uh, 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.67 seconds quantity squared, All right? So you can figure that out. Now that is 34 point something, correct? Anybody verify me on that? Okay, so, so 34, so what is it, 34 point what? 9.6, anybody? I'll put 9.3 or I'll put 0.9 meters, okay? Now notice, uh, multiply that by four. Multiply that number by four. And what do you get? One thirty nine point. Yeah, and so 139 point blah de blah and that, my wonderful, is, my wonderful students, is a verification of the four rectangle method. Okay, you're always going to get four times. All right? It's always going to be four times the drop distance from apogee. You know, horizontally, four times whatever the drop distance is from apogee. All right, so now you have um, your parabola, your parabola uh, is squared away. All right, and uh, so so let's just review here. We looked at oh one more thing I want to uh, point out to you. Okay, let's go back to the original equations of motion that we derived last Friday. Um, X of t equals x of 0 plus vx of 0 times t plus nothing. Now, I'm going to introduce a symbol w to represent simply this quantity vx of 0, okay? So it's just going to be an abbreviation for it. So my equation is a little bit nicer. Also, uh, y of t was equal to initial value of y plus initial y component of the velocity, vy of 0, times t. And this one has an acceleration term, 1 half gt squared. And in this one, uh, g is negative 9.8, as you know, etc. And in this one, I'm going to introduce a symbol for ease of notation, u for vy of 0, all right? Now, the other thing that uh, I'll mention to you is that, let me draw a 5 by 5 square here. Okay, so here's my launch square, and here's my launch tangent. And theta, we know that this is Vy of 0, and this is v, Vx of 0, and this is Vx, or this is V of 0, the main. Okay. And so, um, and we, we mentioned this last time that the tangent of theta, for instance, and you can do sine of theta and so, so forth. Tangent of theta is just Vy of 0 over Vx of 0. Okay, so in terms of my two um, abbreviations, that would be U over W. And you can recast this thing into uh, any form that you need. Uh, and I'll just remind you that the final value of x, which for us was x subscript, subscript, subscript c, um, 
in terms of these constants uh, was minus two uw over g, which expands to minus two vx of zero, if you put the original meanings back in, divided by g. Now that's a positive number, because g is negative. Okay, and then the um, h is a little bit trickier. h is equal to, uh, let's see, minus one half u squared over g. So this one's a battle. This is the one that's a battle between the upward component of the motion quantity squared over g. Okay, this is a positive number as well. This is positive. It's an upside down po uh, parabola because gravity is ne the the g value is negative downward. And so these are the things that you can, you know, so you can actually, if you go to these formulas here, you can immediately write, write down the parabola formula, uh, which is, uh, you know, y minus, now what was it, y minus h or y minus, okay, equals alpha times x minus k quantity squared. So, you know, here's h and then here's uh, k is, is this guy right here. Okay, so you could have written that down immediately, but then you still have to figure out alpha. And alpha, mm, I can't remember what alpha is. Uh, it is equal to I'm looking at my notes here. Oh yeah, uh, alpha is equal to a g over uh, 2w squared, which is, you know, and it's got uh, vx of 0 in there. So this one, the dimension, just to remind you, the dimensions of alpha are inverse meters, which is what you need. So that works out good. And, of course, the dimensions of h are meters. Which you can see right here, because this one is the numerator here for h is uh, meter squared per second squared. The denominator is meter per second squared. So the per second squares cancel, and one factor of meters cancel, but you still have one on top. So that means that the unit of h uh, is equal to meters to the first power. So that's good. So all those the units work out. All right. Now uh, let me pause for questions before we go back to the docu to the uh, laptop projector. Steve, uh, that equation, not yet, not yet. That equation is that kind of like similar to vertex form? This equation here? Yeah, like yeah, that's the vertex form for a parabola. Okay. It's always y minus the y coordinate of the vertex equals some possibly some factor out in front of a parenthesis, and in the parenthesis, you have x minus the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay. Oh, you know what? Uh, did I? Yeah, it, that's right. I did. There was a, a little bit of switcheroony. That's why I was asking about it earlier. Okay. So, all right. And actually, I take that back. This is, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a problem here. Um, I made a, a mistake. This is uh, K is equal to one half. So in this one, K is equal to one half x subscript c so whatever you have up here uh, divided by two i think that's right <laughs> all right now uh if there are no more questions we'll go uh, over to the uh
what you call it. And uh, I'll pose a question to you that we're going to work on together in groups. Can you switch over to the uh, laptop, please? Okay, so we have two, basically two pages of comments about homework two. And you guys, um, the reason I went through all this business of thinking about how far something falls, how much time it takes to rise, that's all physical thinking. I'm thinking about the physics of what's actually happening. Now, many of you may have just plugged stuff into the formulas that we worked out on Thursday, which is all right. But I want you to also know that sometimes thinking about something physically can be a little bit cinchier in terms of like the, the Y coordinate instead of go, like I was working with a student yesterday and you know, he got the Y coordinate right, but he used this big formula to do it when all you really have to do is one half GT squared. Okay. And so, and then to get the, you know, to get the, the rise time, all you have to do is uh, Delta V over G. Okay. You take away all that upward speed, and, and that gives you the rise time. And then you figure out, okay, it's symmetric. Then you get the, the total hang time, and you're, you you got everything at that point. Okay, instead of going through all those equations and stuff. So Now, we're going to hand out a flyer to or a handout to you, uh, one for each person. And I want one person in each group to do the group version of it to hand in, okay? And the rest of you can keep yours. Now, this one, okay, it's this purpley one up here, okay? So we're going to hand this out, and um, Kendra, here's a few, and Gwen, here's a few, and everybody gets one, right? Yeah, everybody gets one, and here's just welcome around, yeah. Good, so you just do it for yourself. Okay. And what this handout is to work out is the optimal angle you know, given say some set velocity, you know, what angle do you tilt it to get the maximum distance? Okay, so 40, you know, is it 45? Is it 30? Is it you know, 60, is it, you know, what's the maximum angle? Now, I want you to prove it. I want you to derive the angle, right? And I haven't really get, told you how to do it, so you're going to have to get your coconuts together. Three, two, or one coconut, as, as this table has over here, and, uh, and come up with an idea. Come up with a brainstorm and see if it works. Now we'll give you, I'm going to pause the recording and then. You... Okay, one per group. Hurry up, come on. Uh, just, Kendra, don't wait. Just get them. If you're ready or not, just turn it in. We got, we got work to do. Turn it in. Give me your work. Where's Noah? You got it? All right. Give me your work. All right. You guys ready? Okay. Thanks, Mahmoud. Okay. All right. Uh, Tyler, these guys over in the corner. Just get whatever they've got. If you're not finished, that's all right. We want to see what you got. Hopefully you're pretty – are you guys good? You're finished? Chimera ants. Chimera ants. Come on up here. Chimera ants. Come on up. Hold on to this. So this is this is a, a derivative. You did, took a derivative. Yes. 
Okay, which one of you wants to explain it? You, you, or you? You want to do it? You're going to do it up here at the, at the dot cam. It'll be, it'll be immortalized in the YouTube. I absolutely can't explain it. I, I just know it from Calc. I really can't explain it. Explain it from Calc. That's what, I, just want, I just want one person. This is good. Okay, it's not the way I would do it, but it's, it's good. All right. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, next time, you. And the time after that, you. Okay. All right, so get ready. Okay. Oh, you can return to your seats. Got them? You want me to stay up here? Uh, no, you can return to your seat. I'll call you up in a minute. What's that? Okay. Do we do we have everybody's papyrus? Anybody still have their paper? Okay, here we go. Students, shh, shh, shh. I'm going to invite a representative from the Chimera Ants to come up here to the document cam and go over their derivation. Diego, take it away. Okay. And uh, put this here. I'll pick you up. All go right. Ahead. So. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Switch to the document. So, okay. So we started with the total time. Wait a minute. Put this on. Put that to your shirt or something. All right. So we started with the total time equation and plugged it into the kinematic equation for the x position of the projectile motion. And so you end up getting the, the equation for range. And then in order to get the maximum value of the range, we set it equal to zero. And in the end, you get cosine. Wait to, a minute. You set what equal to zero? The derivative. Where's the derivative? Right here. So x prime is a derivative? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the other way to write that with d by d something? D by d theta. Okay, so remember that. Okay, now some of you didn't do that. I have one more person that I'm going to invite. Steve, you want to come up? Okay, well, I'll call you up next. Okay, continue, D. And so we set it equal to zero and we solved for theta, and you end up getting pi over four, which is 45 degrees. And my wonderful students, that is the way that I. Dr. Brickner also did it, except uh, I did a little bit differently, but, and there's a trig, uh, you don't have a trig, uh, there's a trig identity in there. Yes. You see it? Point it out. It's, use, a, use one of the pens there. Uh, the trig identity happens right here. Right. So when you have two sine theta, cosine theta, it is sine two theta. So, and I, I know a, a bunch of you guys back here, you had the, the trig identity, right? Okay. And who else saw the trig identity? Raise your hand. A couple of you? All right, good. All right. Now, that's not the only way to do it, but Diego and the Chimera Ants did score big time. They get bonus points today. Um, next, Steve. Bring your... Um, let me find your paper here. Well, it's not the same one as paper. Oh, okay. So, so give me your, show your paper, talk your way through. So, I, I took. Oh, this. sorry. Okay. okay. Here, put that to your shirt. Excuse the handwriting. I think I turn it off. Yeah, I might have to mark this handwriting down well, a little bit. I didn't turn this in, but. Um, and so. this, this right triangle over here. I can definitely put wow. my thumb over it, okay. but let's go ahead and talk um, your way through this. So I figured 45 would be like the the most appropriate angle, so I just kind of 
worked off of that. I did 46 and 44 because they're both the same distance away from 45. Um, and I took the VX and the VY. Um, I calculated them as the same. And then I took 45 just to prove it. And uh, I did the is it TA I found. Since they were the same, I just calculated TA as 0.71 is the same. And then on the bottom, uh, I found the TC, which is 2TA. Um, and then these were What the was same. your initial speed? Uh, 10 meters 10 per meters second? 10 meters per second for all of them. So he didn't use 37, he used 10. That's all right. You don't have to use, in fact, oh, continue, go ahead. Yeah, um, it was easier because I just moved the decimal place. Um, and then I found the 45 was 1.44, and then the one away from 45 was 1.42. Then I used um, X max as VX0 times TC, and I found that 46 and 44, the ones both one away, were both 9.87 meters, and 45 was 10.18. Okay, very nice. Uh, now, what's what's Steve? Now, what's the name of your group again? 954. 954, area code 954. What they did was, or what Steve did, is this what you guys also did, or no, did you they do did a, you did a cal yeah. Yeah. Ooh, So this is this is your personal. Well, I, I personal vendetta over here. That's all right. I guess they're both. The right. reason, the re, did you guys use calculus? Kind of like what I did. Yeah. Okay. The reason I Steve talked to me about this. This is also a legitimate way of doing it. Um, finding an answer. Now he he went in increments of one degree, and he only took one increment above and one increment below. But in Okay, thanks. And let's give Steve and uh, the Chimera ants. Chimera ants, stand up and take them out. Stand up. All of you, come on. Okay, anyways, they did great. So, um, what, Steve, what Steve was doing was solving by table. You know, numerically finding a minimum or actually a maximum. Now, this problem is amenable to calculus. You get an analytic solution. 2 theta equals uh, uh, pi over 2, so theta is pi over 4. That's your analytic solution, and it's exact using calculus. But a lot of problems that you will find in the future are not um, amenable to an analytic solution. And so in that case, you would be doing derivatives, or you would actually calculate the function, which is easy to calculate, or maybe do the derivatives and look for where the derivative goes through zero. You know, it's going to be positive, and then it's going to go negative, and where it goes through zero, that's your, it's your key value. Or the opposite, it, it's negative, and then it goes positive, and then that's, you know, where it goes through zero, that's your key value. And believe me, um, most of the research that in physics that we do, uh, you have to do a lot of numerical solution of uh, equations like that. So the tabular way that Steve kind of gave you the bare bones look at uh, is valuable. And, you know, you can do that. And then maybe, you know, a week later, you get some flash of insight while you're brushing your teeth. Oh, wait a minute, I could do a derivative of this. And so, but, you know, so sometimes you might not see it. You do the tables and stuff, you work it out, or think about it, you know, for a couple of weeks or something. You know, for me, a lot of times, you know, when I was out in Montana working on my thesis and stuff, I'd be walking, I'd be out hiking up the mountains, and I'd come back down the mountains, and all of a sudden I'd see the solution, you know, walking back to my vehicle. And uh, that's that's the way it works, you know. So you do do everything you can try, get a solution, and then keep thinking about it. Let it cook in the back of your mind, and uh, and this is a legitimate method to use. So although Steve's handwriting needs a little improvement, uh, other than that, it was uh, pretty righteous. Now, uh, let me just show you my notes, and uh, here's what. Oh. Uh, 
you can see here, this is, uh, I was talking to some students, this is the cosine curve. There's a lot of different ways to think about it. But here's the, here's the uh, formula. This is me yesterday. And this factor K, capital K is the kinetic energy at launch. Uh, so I factored that in. And that takes up a bunch of the symbols and stuff. And of course, G is still uh, minus 9.8 meters per second. Then I did my trig identity here. And then I did d by d theta of that function. And I get, uh, so basically, uh, so I get minus 4 cosine of 2 theta times this factor right here, k over g. And that's equal to 0 when the cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0, which is pi over 4. And minus pi over 4, but minus pi over 4 is not a physical solution. Okay. Uh, so you also have to have, keep an eye out on that. Let's see, here's my, here's my notes from... So here's my notes from yesterday. You can see me messing around, getting ready for class. This doesn't show in color. I can't believe it. I guess it's kind of in color. Anyways, um, good. Now, um, what we're going to do next, uh, we need to get the pendulums ready. Uh, we're going to uh, take a minute to get – can you please help with uh, Tyler with the pendulums and stuff? We want to get that out to everybody. You're going to come up and get meter sticks and equipment for a pendulum. And then what you're going to do is measure the period of the pendulum. All right, so you're going to take a weight of mass and just use one and just keep that as your standard. It, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that'll, you know, something will swing on a string. And I want you to try um, at least five different lengths. Now, your equipment is going to be the base of your uh, framework is going to be, see those, can you hold up one of those uh, stands? Okay, so this is the stand that you're going to use. It's going to be on your tabletop. Each team will have one. And there will be a little bracket at the top. And in the bracket, you'll anchor your string and then your weight, and then you'll swing it and time it. All right? And you want to get the period at each length. Okay? So I want you to do at least five different lengths um, starting down near the floor. Okay? And question? The keys for the Okay, so start with, you know, your longest plane and then shorten it up four or five times, six times. And uh, don't do don't do it, you know, too short because that'll be really fast. It'll be tough to time. Okay. And I would suggest Knowing your reaction time, I want you to uh, see if your reaction time is consistent with your, you know, the uh, standard deviation delta T of your period measurements. So you're, what you're going to be measuring is a period, okay, using your iPhone or something like that. Yeah, any of those is fine. Let's bring it up here and hand it out. No, they can all have three at once, just not too big. They can use anything for a weight. Okay, so what are we going to do? Are we going to pick up stuff back there? Okay, and where are the brackets? They should be in the A4. Okay, so go over to Tyler, get your stand. Come over here, and we need string as well. The string is up there. Where's the string? It was up here. Okay, so get some string. Are there some scissors? Give them about this much string. Okay. Okay. And the weights. Also, Quinn, give them one of these handouts. Oh, okay. 
Uh, you guys, the blue hand, use the blue hand out for this uh, exercise. One per person? Oh, one per person. Okay. No, 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 no. When they come up and get oh, their okay. string and everything. It's up to take it. Stack it up on top of the purple ones. Okay, so everybody gets this. Do you have a scissors? There's one of these scissors. Don't lock them up. There's scissors in here. And where are those? So everybody gets some string and a good a good amount like this. Good. All right. Can everybody get a bracket? Don't stand back here. You I'm going to bring him back to the, where he okay. stands. Go over and get a, a, a bracket over there. Did you get, Tyler, did, did you give away all the stands? That's 33 stands? No? Okay. Okay. Help, can you help Quinn with the strength? Let Kendra do that. You get to work on your stuff. Okay, Quinn, you operate the scissors. And everybody needs a weight. Did, did they take weights back? No, I didn't get them all out yet. Um, Kendra, where are the weights? They're in A1. Oh, boy. Um, Tyler, yeah. can you come in? Are you distributing brackets? Okay, Kendra, look after the weights. Okay. And I'll, I'll do that. Where does it end? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. How do we take And if you need more strength, come on. Give a place where. What? Just anything that will serve as a weight. That's a page one, Bob. Okay. Uh, no, take one for everybody.
String, string, string. Who needs string? You guys need string? Skip this one off. We may, some people might need a replacement if they mess up. Okay. Let's finish. I want to. I want to give you some instructions. We're going to modify my plan for today. Uh, everybody's got their measurements in and stuff, so that's good. Um, I'm going to let you work on your calculations of frequency and standard deviation and everything overnight or until Thursday. We'll hand in this blue sheet when you get to class. Um, in the meantime, we're going to um, – this is the question I wanted to ask, but we don't have enough time. First thing on Thursday, I'm going to ask you about this. Did you discern a pattern in the frequencies or periods? Okay, and you're going to type in an answer to that in the clicker. And I would advise, you know, as you're analyzing your table of data and your table of calculations, uh, just do that, look at them. And then maybe go do something, you know, go work out or have some dinner or something like that. Come back to them later and see if you have any inspiration. All right. It might not be easy to see any patterns. All right. Shh. Tristan. All right. It might not be easy to see any patterns. Uh, but I want you to try uh, over the next two days. So, uh, so your homework is look for the pattern. Catch up to my annotations up to Chapter 4.3, and then browse and skim the rest of the way through Chapter 4. Okay, you're dismissed a few minutes early today. <laughs>